Um, moving into something slightly different uh, than before the break, uh, but you can say in other ways very related because it's all related in permaculture to me at least. Um, and so I, I want to talk a little bit about um, uh, some um, some rocket rocket stoves, some rocket ovens that we are that I'm using here where I'm where I'm where I'm living. Uh, but before I start uh, with that, I would like to just know from all of you if you are familiar with um, with rocket stoves. So I would like to just uh, ask you or those of you who feel like it in the chat to just put a, a a plus or several pluses if you feel you are familiar with rocket stoves or a zero if you're like, Phew, I don't really know or a minus if you're like, I know, I know nothing about rocket stoves. So if, um, yeah, I already see a couple of uh, of responses. If there are other people that feel like um, responding as well, um, okay, okay. I see there's some um, there's some um, difference. That's great. Um, and uh, so I will I will start by let me see how how shall I do this again. I'm gonna share my screen screen. Um, oops, it's not like that. Here we go, and here we go. Okay, so um, I'm going to start talking about bread <laughs> because um, bread is uh, something that makes me feel good. I I take uh, I take care of myself when I bake this kind of bread specifically, not just any kind of bread, but uh, this is. Uh, um, a bread uh, based on a, a Danish recipe that I'm making here in France. It makes me feel at home, even though uh, I'm far away, uh, at least uh, uh, geographically speaking, from where I've been brought up. But then I can make my lovely uh, rye bread. Um, and uh, this uh, rye bread here, I, I make it in my uh, rocket uh, powered uh, oven. Um, and uh, that's the one I will talk about. But before I, I go into a lit, little bit more about this specific oven, I'll just uh, briefly talk a little bit about um, rocket stoves in general, seeing that there's a, a mix of, um, of knowledge or, or on this um, uh, in the group already. Um, so you can say from a very, very basic point of view, uh, the principle is that um, you have you can have this kind of L shape uh, where you add your wood here. You have your burn happening here, and you then uh, have the heat rising up here in your heat riser. And on top of that, you can then cook something. And the the super smart uh, thing about the the rocket stoves in general is that they are compared to a normal fire, are much much more efficient uh, and much much more clean, much more ecological. Use less wood. Um, for several reasons. One reason for being more clean is that uh, you in some way have kind of a double combustion. You, you both have the, the wood that is burning and you also have the, when it's working well at least, you also have the, the gases uh, that are being burnt. So you don't have any smoke, um, very few particles that are, that are exiting. Uh, and so your, your combustion is, uh, is quite uh, clean. Um, there are many ways to to construct uh, rocket stoves in general. Uh, just you know, from the very basic ones uh, like these tin can tin can uh, rocket stoves, where like uh, this one here, for instance, is just made with three tin cans. You have a bigger tin can here, and a smaller one uh, in here. That's the same uh, diameter as the one down here. Um, and uh, then uh, you put insulation in this part here between, a bit like what was what we also saw on this diagram here, you see the insulation being this layer here. So again, uh, if you re relate this uh, picture here to the images before, uh, this this uh, here is the outer, the bigger tin can. Here you have uh, one inner tin can, and here you have another uh, tin can. Um, and uh, actually this can be super efficient. Like uh, for instance, me when I go on some, uh, uh, bike rides um, instead of uh, instead of bringing a gas uh, little you know thing for for cooking cooking my food I just bring a little uh, homemade uh, tin can rocket stove it wastes nothing because I've insulated it with, it with um, ashes 
Um, and it means that uh, pretty much wherever I go, I can always uh, heat up tea or rice or yeah, whatever I, I, I feel I, I, I need. I just need little twigs um, and it's, it's super, super efficient. Um, so that's the very, just very basically uh, the, the idea of, uh, of the rocket stoves in general. Um, so, but going from there, uh, we can then uh, take it a step further and say, okay, now we already have uh, all this heat that comes out here. Yes, we can use it to put a, a pot on top and use that heat directly. Um, but we can also um, use this heat that we generate from here to actually heat up an oven. Um, and uh, there are different ways of doing that. I'm sure there's many different ways of doing that. That's one of the lovely things about permaculture, I think as, as well at least, that, that uh, it's not like there's only one recipe, one way of doing things. Uh, you can have a design and you can, or you can have a, um, a schematic and then you can kind of design it in, in the way that makes sense for you depending on what you have available. Um, but for this specific uh, rocket powered oven that was the one that baked the bread that I showed before, uh, I have used uh, this guide here. So I just want to say the picture on the right side here, this is not my, uh, <laughs> my oven. Um, this is just one I grabbed from, uh, from Nicosia, from, from, from the net. Um, but it's just to show you an example of um, the one that is pictured on this image. And no, I have not uh, been hired by Tim Barker to, uh, to, uh, <laughs> to advertise this uh, specific little book, but uh, it was very helpful for me when I, uh, when I created um, this little uh, rocket powered oven um, that, that we have here at Utopia where I'm living. Um, so the thing is that basically what we are trying to do is that we are uh, cooking all our food with, with wood. And it's from that perspective that I was uh, trying to think, figure out, okay, uh, in the winter, we often have access to an oven because we have our big stove inside the house that's heating up the, the house. And that has a little oven compartment. But in the summer or in times when it's not cold enough to heat up the house, well, then we didn't have an oven. And that's a pity because then I couldn't bake my bread. Otherwise, we had a big, an, I can, like a homemade uh, pizza oven that consumes a lot of wood. Uh, so I was really thinking, well, there must be a, a, an easy way to try and make something that, that can actually meet those needs uh, or desires uh, of mine, at least, of, uh, of baking my own bread in the summer without consuming too much wood. And that's how I came across this little book here. Um, so from these rocket-powered ovens uh, of these types here, there are two, two uh, different types. Um, there's what is called, uh, what he calls, Tim Bagadis calls a uh, uh, a black oven uh, and a white oven. It's not about the color as such, uh, but it is a little bit related to that. Uh, the thing is that, or the difference is here, the one that's shown here is kind of the white oven. The reason that it's called the white oven uh, is that you don't have a direct uh, contact between the heat uh, or the gases and the stuff that you're cooking. So in this specific example here, you have your rocket stove down here, add your wood here. Uh, your heat riser is here, so your, your, your heat rises up, but then you have a chamber that's around here in the edge. And that's this chamber that's being uh, where the gases are going into and then they're exiting on the other side here. Um, that means that uh, the stuff you're cooking inside, it is, it, uh, it is not uh, directly in touch with, uh, with, uh, with, uh, with the gases. Uh, but this uh, takes a lot of time to create and I didn't really have all that time to do it when I did it and I also wanted to try and make it a bit more simple uh, with just what I just had around and uh, I was lucky enough to have uh, a lot of clay around and a lot of uh, straw around and sand so I could easily make uh, this part down here. I also had some different tubes so I could make this uh, but here, but I didn't have all these uh, things, or at least I was a bit too lazy to try and, try and make all that. And I had another, like a normal conventional oven. Um, so that's the conventional oven instead that you can use to create a, uh, um, the, 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 the black oven as it's called. And I'm gonna see if I can manage to just show a little video uh, of that. Uh, it's here. I don't know if do you do you see this video now or do you still see the other 
Um, you still you. see the rocket power, doesn't it? Yeah. Okay, here you go. I have to do it like this. So now you should now you should see the the, the um, video, the video yep. instead. Yeah. So this here first is the still of uh, my uh, homemade uh, uh, rocket powered oven. Again, you see down here is the is the rocket stove itself, uh, where we add the wood. Uh, it's it's burned down here in the burn chamber, uh, and it's rising up uh, with the heat uh, heat riser here. And there's actually just a hole that's cut uh, inside of the oven, so the heat goes directly inside the oven. And you have this hole here on the back um, where the oh. Wait a second, I have to just mute this uh, sound. Sorry, one second. Yeah, there we go. Um, and so, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a very simple design actually. Um, and uh, right now you don't really see it right here on this video yet, but the oven is actually on. I'm right now baking uh, my bread, I think. Or at least I'm baking something in there. Now you see uh, the flames uh, down there uh, going very well being, being sucked uh, into the into the heat riser, as you see here, uh, stacked with a lot of uh, little pieces of wood, as I'm pointing at in this video, uh, going up through the heat riser, and then you see there this hole, and uh, entering inside the oven. Ah, I have even shown what I what I'm cooking in there. Okay, uh, well, I'm not cooking anything yet. I'm just heating up the oven. <laughs> uh, I didn't remember what was on this video, but. Uh, Anyway, what you also see on the back is where the uh, the, it's, the heat comes out at the end. You, see, you almost you don't see anything, right? Because there's no smoke, because the smoke is being burned uh, inside the um, the um, in the in the heat riser uh, and the burn chamber. So we really don't have uh, any smoke coming out. And um, the really nice thing about this um, this guy here is that uh, I can bake. Uh, you see what I've cut of wood here is the equivalent of, of one little um, log of, uh, of uh, wood that I've uh, chopped into smaller pieces. Um, and um, that can, two, two little logs like that uh, will, uh, will uh, make me able to, um, to cook uh, my, um, my bread, my four breads. So I find that a quite efficient way of, uh, of, cooking, my, of cooking my bread. Um, and um, so I see that the time is moving fast. Um, and uh, yeah, so I actually want to uh, leave it at that for now. I could talk much more about rocket stoves and rocket powered ovens and also this uh, little rocket mass heater that is right next to me. Uh, but that'll, that'll be for another time um, because I want to just uh, leave a little space uh, if there's uh, any questions or or comments um, from anyone in relation to what I what I shared here, so any questions or comments or anything, um, please go ahead. I have a question. Um, how much control do you have over the temperature once it's going? Because with a usual rocket stove, there isn't much control. So how do you find out with the cooking? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question, and and for sure you don't have the same. Uh, amount of control as you, as you do in a normal oven. Uh, what I can do is, um, um, if you remember, you know, uh, yeah, where on the, um, uh, the feed tube where I add the wood, uh, sometimes I do close it much more with uh, two bricks that, that uh, so there's much less uh, air that enters and that really slows down the, 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 the burning of, of the wood and that makes the temperature go down a bit. So that's my way of being able to otherwise I can also just uh, open the, the door a little bit uh, and lose some heat. Um, but that's the two ways that I can kind of control the, the heat. Great, thank you. Or I was just wondering, um, yeah, did you think about a solar baking system or something, you know, at, without even burning wood? Would that be possible? Did you look at two designs for that? Yeah, I mean, I, I, we, we do that as well. And I haven't, I have never tried it for, for baking bread, um, but I, I, I'm sure it should be possible. Uh, but uh, we do that just with uh, like bake, making uh, cooking lentils or, or rice or, or beans or things like that. You know, uh, we put them out in the, in the morning in this uh, insulated box where we have a mirror on top and we have to kind of turn it a bit with the, with the sun, but you can also use a, you know, a, 
an antenna, a per, per, I forgot what it's called in English right now, but this round like shape. A satellite you know, dish. Satellite dish, yeah, exactly. Thank you. Um, so at least, but I don't know about uh, baking bread, if you can get temperatures yeah. for that. The problem with the satellite dish is it really concentrates the, the temperature. And so it's probably too hot for, for baking. And then because you want it to be consistent over what, I don't know, I, I've never baked bread, but you want it a consistent temperature for an hour or something maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so you're going to have to keep moving the satellite dish to get that optimum. So what we've done, what I've designed for someone else is imagine if you have like a room, in this particular case it was a shower, which had a polycarbonate. It was made of polycarbonates because they had loads of it. So uh, we effectively created a little greenhouse within this polycarbonate greenhouse uh, section. So at the top where the, obviously heat rises, then you had a little uh, extra section. So greenhouse within a greenhouse. And then, um, uh, and then we put the bread inside a, uh, you know, these, these, um, the cruziers, these, these French ceramic coated cast iron pots. And what we got is we got a really good consistent temperature in there. So you basically just use the sun's heat, which heats up this greenhouse within a greenhouse, uh, put the bread in, but it takes, I think it was taking about two hours or something. So it's taking mm -hmm. maybe twice as long as normal, but you hit a consistent temperature, which is good enough for baking. Uh, yeah, I mean, we were just playing around with it and we managed to get it working. But as I say, I don't ever eat bread, so it's not something I make for myself. But that that's the, the problem, that's the challenge you've got, is the consistent temperature. Yeah, it's 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 a nice uh, it's a it's a nice question. It's a nice uh, I, uh, way also there. I mean, that, that gives me uh, the inspiration to try and do that because even if I can do without wood or I don't have to turn on the oven, uh, that would be even even easier. <laughs> and obviously, that's a summer thing. You're not going to do that in the winter. That's for sure. <laughs> um, I have another question. Um, if that's okay. Got yeah. one more minute before we move on. So. Um, do you have any experience of combining the functions? Because we've got like a rocket mass heater, so we're using it to heat the house in winter. Um, but do you know of being able to combine the functions of like being able to get a good cooking temperature for an oven and still being able to heat the house with that? Yeah, I mean, that's also something I've been, I've been looking a bit at because we're also going to construct a, a, a rocket mass heater for, for our house. Um, and we would still like to be able to have this oven function. Um, and so far, what I've been seeing, uh, there's this little, I don't know if you know this little uh, book here. Uh, uh, um, it's called Rocket Mass Heaters. It's by Yanto Evans. Um, but it, in the back of oh, that, yeah. it, has some, uh, it has some good um, uh, um, examples also, like for instance, of this pocket rocket, um, where you can really boost the temperature. Uh, uh, so so it, you would need to combine kind of a more, I think how I, I see it at least, you need to be able to make a, a, a way where you're able to combine. So for, for some time you really boost it uh, to get out a lot of heat for your oven part. And then later on you can kind of switch that part off and then just use your, your, your normal uh, uh, rocket heater. But I don't, I don't have it really yet, but I see from there, there are some ways that it should be, that it should be possible, I think. Yeah, I've seen a friend in uh, Hungary who's built exactly cool. that and uh and it worked and she's got all kind yeah it's it's a little bit complicated to construct a bit a lot more complicated than a normal rocket stove uh rocket you know, stove stroke oven but uh but yeah definitely possible anyway so we're over time so thank you very much tor that was an amazing uh presentation and um we'll hand over to naveen who is going to talk about crowdfunding I'm going to make him co-host. Okay. And put the spotlight on him. Okay. Perfect. Thank you, everyone. Mm. Yeah, so this is also going to be a very pragmatic uh, presentation on, you know, making your dream projects come to life through crowdfunding. Uh, I, I was just wondering uh, how many of you have uh, ever crowdfunded a project or 
supported a crowdfunding project? Uh, how many have uh, have organized one for your project? Any hands? Uh, cool, very good. Two, three. Uh, how many of you would like to crowdfund your project? Maybe Thor says maybe, cool. So yeah, Sheep as well has another idea coming up. So we're gonna also make one of your projects come to life today, hopefully, if you have time. Um, yeah, my experience with crowdfunding has been basically, uh, yeah, last year. Does everyone know this tool, Miro? I mean, it's, it's super great to make mind maps. You can go infinitely big. So <laughs> this is part of the permaculture teacher training and I'm just down there, right? So it's a great tool. I highly recommend it. Uh, Miro, it's free. And you can invite people uh, to view your screen as well. Uh, yeah, so my experience with uh, crowdfunding has been like last year. Uh, we organized a retreat. I mean, I'm, I'm a lecturer at the university and, you know, uh, um, at the university, we kind of have this very disciplinary structure. You do courses and you rarely get a chance to meet uh, people from other disciplines, other departments, other walks of life. And so the Kaleido retreat that we do really brings people from all walks of life together into a four day creative fest and uh, we needed money to do it. And so we launched a crowdfunding that's, uh, you can see an example here. And this is um, maybe a Swiss uh, crowdfunding website called We Make It. Um, yeah, so that was last year and we could manage to raise like $8,000 from 40 people to make it come to life. And um, yeah, this year uh, during the, the, the COVID lockdown in India, I was able to launch a project uh, to raise money to support daily meals for uh, daily wage workers who had lost uh, all their livelihoods because of the lockdown. And so this was more of a crowdfunding for a hunger relief project that we did. Um, so it was much larger in scale, it was called Fighting Hunger, Fighting Corona. We were able to raise around $40,000 uh, from 400 people, uh, a much uh, longer campaign, um, yeah. So, I mean, uh, whatever your project is, uh, whether it's to start a community garden, start a maker space, restart a business that's been affected by COVID, do some relief work uh, in your neighborhood or in a community outside, publish one of your books, open a store, fund uh, a re-education or solar power home or build a mega rocket stuff, I just wrote that, or start an environmental campaign. Crowdfunding is uh, pretty, great uh, tool, I would say. Um, I mean, all projects kind of, you know, I mean, if there's the people, the skills and the money, uh, you can bring your projects to life. Uh, well, and crowdfunding really comes to place when you have uh, no uh, money or some money. Well, what if uh, you could harness your community uh, and their communities and their communities too, uh, putting those small amounts uh, from around the world uh, into your piggy bank and, uh, you know, making your dream come true, right? And I, I think, uh, you know, so this community, uh, you know, your crowd becomes your community here. Uh, you reward them through certain uh, news, you build a relationship, and you also, uh, we'll talk about later, really build community. Uh, I would call it community funding rather than crowdfunding. So let's see how you would go about with such a project. Uh, and I would say really uh, from a permaculture point of view, crowdfunding has uh, many fold or multiple yields. Uh, not only do you get the money, but you build a community from the crowd. It brings you fans. Uh, it brings you customer sales, it gives you experience in communication and marketing. It reconnects you with all those friends and colleagues uh, who you might want to reach out to tell them about your cool project, right? So I think it's really a, a way of creatively using and responding to change, kind of using these digital tools that are there. 
uh, you're kind of observing what limitations, uh, what kind of uh, things around you and people kind of, uh, you know, catching and storing that energy and kind of transforming it creatively to bring your project to life. And uh, yeah, uh, so it's hard work, but I have to say that it's uh, exciting and fun. Um, and uh, some key things to remember. Uh, most projects come to life. Uh, they kind of say that 60% of projects uh, become successful. Uh, some of these platforms, uh, you know, have a huge commission fee. So if you launch your um, uh, project on a platform, you have to take care of what kind of commissions they charge. For example, we make it here. Uh, you can see the list of projects here. Take a commission of 10%. So 10% of the money that you raised goes to these platforms. And this is especially a solidarity platform uh, for the COVID and they have reduced the uh, fees to 5%. So COVID is a nice time to launch uh, your projects because of reduced fees. Uh, it seems like people staying at home uh, support much more crowdfunding projects. That's a good thing. Uh, but they are cracking down on projects like uh, COVID-19 Cure Tonic. So you don't want to crowdfund that. They are cutting these projects down. And uh, one of the crowdfunding platform uh, founders kind of said that in the digital er era, generosity can flow unhinged across the world, even when physical infrastructure crumbles. So, um, yeah, I think that's very motivating and looking at all the the donations that have been pouring in for hunger relief, uh, COVID relief projects across the world by crowdfunding, it's very encouraging at it, as it uh, breaks down these physical gaps between us. Uh, uh, you cannot start a project and go on holiday. Uh, it's really hard work and you usually crowdfund for a period of 30 to 60 days. Uh, there are something called rewards, which you promise to give to people who back your project. So choose them carefully. Don't make them overly complicated that you spend most of your time giving back to the backers then working on your project. And it's a great way to crowdfund as an individual, as a collective, as a cooperative, or even as a company. Um, so let's uh, go into maybe kind of very specific projects. Does someone have maybe a project that they might want to uh, look at crowdfunding? Maybe we can pick an example from here and uh, dive into it. Or if there are any questions so far, just unmute yourself and let me know. I don't see the chat uh, right now. Sorry, my computer is not reacting. Yeah, there's nothing in the chat at the moment. Okay. If no one is else there has... any particular, sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Is there any particular platform that you would recommend or like some way of deciding which ones are useful to actually look at? Okay, so it really depends on your project and where you're located and where your backers are located or where your community is located. So you might have uh, uh, seen Kickstarter. So, I mean, before you start a project, I have it here, it's super slow. You might need to do some research on your locality or region. What kind of projects are actually supported by the platform? Um, you know, so Kickstarter, Indiegogo, they are very famous uh, worldwide global platforms. Uh, Kickstarter is great for, you know, larger projects where you want to, you know, people who are not your friends to crowdfund. They have a huge global audience. Indiegogo as well. Uh, I used uh, We Make It because it's a Swiss platform. People trusted it in Switzerland and it's also there in Austria and Germany. So I would suggest doing research on platforms that are in your region or where your backers are. Thank you. Yeah. 
So other things that you might need to look are platform commissions. I mean, nothing is free. These platforms usually take a five to 10% commission on everything that you get. You also have to be careful that some of your projects don't get funded if you don't raise the entire amount. So it might be all or nothing. So you might not get the partial uh, crowdfunding amount. You might also want to look at additional offers or channels. Uh, if, you, if you looked at uh, Fight Hunger, Fight Corona, it, it really fit the COVID relief uh, funding project for which we got a discount on the, the commissions uh, that the platform takes. While for the retreat that we organized, since it was a gathering of scientists and artists, we could get something called a science booster, uh, which kind of doubled the fund that we collected uh, from the network. Uh, so it might be a good um, thing to look if there are offers or channels that specifically support the kind of projects that you're looking at. Um, yeah, and definitely check for similar projects uh, uh, on the platform. Check who started them, which platforms they use, how much they raised, and who supported them, what were their rewards. Uh, so, you know, you don't want to start really from scratch, uh, look at what others have done and, uh, you know, copy and paste to a certain degree of a successful project. Um, anyone else has a question? On crowdfunding? Well, I mean, one of the things that, uh, you know, I, um, here is that what I usually did in the last session on crowdfunding was really bring a project that you had here to life by just going through the, the design phase of how you could, you know, start a crowdfunding project. Uh, would you like uh, to do an example from here? Something that resonates with you guys? Maybe one of you introduce the project if no one else has, but it'd be nice if someone else steps up first. Yeah. Zoe, do you want to publish your book of illustrations? <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't think I'm there yet. <laughs> but uh, maybe uh, in some years. <laughs> okay. Sheep, do you want to give it a go? I can, I can do, yeah, pick. I'll publish my book of illustrations. <laughs> okay, very good. Uh, let's, um, I think, uh, yeah, okay. So I can't, move, I can't move the poster here because it's on presentation view. But let's say we want to bring uh, Chloe's uh, book to life. Uh, using five minutes, power. five minutes. Thank you. Using the power of the network. So do you have a nice title for your crowdfunding project? So here are some examples, right? I mean, here we did fight hunger, fight Corona, really in your face. Uh, these are examples of a project name, something short and sweet. It describes your book, maybe. I don't know, Zoetic Adventures. <laughs> something like that. Would you call it Zoe's Adventures? Uh, Zoetic. Zoetic Adventures. So, uh, do you have a one-liner that defines your project to the world? Okay, I, I'm just making this up from, from scratch. <laughs> yes, yes, definitely. Um, uh, yeah, like um, a short like uh, illustrations that, uh, well, like comic in a comic way uh, that um, describe like permaculture adventures or like in the daily life. <laughs> Daily permaculture experiences. <laughs> experiences. In a, mm. Zoe's daily permaculture experiences <laughs> for everyone. Right? Illustrated. Illustrated. 
Uh, well, uh, so the next really big part is setting a realistic fundraising goal. I mean, it's a hypothetical project, but you know, uh, how much do you think you need to bring your project to life? Um, you know, publishing costs, illustration. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I'm really bad at estimating, especially with money. Um, I don't know. 5,000 euros? How many? 5,000? You want to publish maybe 200 books? Yeah, I guess. Maybe that's, um, yeah, let's, let's say 5,000. That okay. would be. Okay. Like, how, how much would that be per person? So let's say you would have 250 people pitching in 20 euros each. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So 250 people, um, yeah. If you reach 250 people who mm -hmm. put in 20 euros each, you could raise your amount. Yeah. Right. And why should people support you, uh, Zoe? Uh, oh, <laughs> well, I think I'm, I think I'm badass. Okay. <laughs> Um, well, uh, why should people support me? Because um, um, they uh, they can get like the, a nice illustrated book in the end in return. And um, um, so, so I would put that as a reward here. They get an illustrated book. But what's uh, like special about your book? Um, it's playful maybe or like uh, uh, making permaculture accessible for everyone uh, well everyone is a big word but <laughs> uh, and and learning in a playful way well this would be the first time someone makes a book that makes permaculture accessible to everyone in a playful way right and uh, yeah, so what would people get in return? I mean, you know, the cost of a book may be 20 euros, so they get a book for if they put in 20 euros. And maybe they don't have 20 euros. What could they get in return? Maybe a, a poster, poster or a food pouch. Food pouch? No, oh, um, <laughs> that's also possible. I said postcards. <laughs> So yeah, the basic uh, here, the essentials of the project when you put it on a crowdfunding platform is defining a great eye-catching title, defining your project that it's clear for everyone and setting a realistic fundraising goal. So if, uh, Zoe's not going to raise 5,000 euros from 250 people uh, and it's a uh, all or nothing project it's not going to come to life and she she claims that she can make permaculture accessible to everyone in a very playful way and for people who support her she offers these things in reward uh, illustrated book uh, posters a food pouch and postcards so once you have this in and you add those amazing pictures and videos of you telling uh, why people must support your project, uh, you are ready to go. So, yeah, I think, yeah. So that's, uh, any questions? Uh, okay, so we're theoretically out of time. So this last section of the, the event anyway is questions and answers. So maybe we can start with any questions and answers about crowdfunding in particular. And then we'll gradually move into anything else that anyone wants answers on. So, yeah, any questions about crowdfunding? Do you have any recommendations for promoting it? Because I guess you can promote it on the platform, but like other ways as well to share it with different people. Yeah, so that's a great question because it's a lot of hard work to really, uh, yeah, get your project fully funded. So I would really start from word of mouth, uh, the three Fs, really family, friends, and fans. 
reach out to them, pick up the phone, give them a personal call or a text and tell them about your cool project. Uh, I think that's really the first place uh, on social media. I don't know, depending on your project, you might want to look at Facebook, Instagram. I also looked at LinkedIn, maybe some of those professional networks. Uh, make flyers, posters, stick them everywhere in your neighborhood. Uh, make a party. Uh, just tell everyone you know. Uh, yeah. You can uh, look for support from the platform itself. So most platforms also allow you to pay a small fee with which you can come on the front page. So here you can see we make it and uh, they have this nice section called we fancy. So if you pay them some money, they might put you on the front page. So this is another way how they make money. But uh, yeah, talk to influencers, uh, talk to if it's a permaculture project, you might want to look at all the Facebook groups, Facebook pages. Uh, yeah. So really, uh, you know, team specific marketing would be the way to go. Start from the three F's and uh, call those long lost friends, your colleagues, anybody who might be remotely interested. And I'm sure they would like to know what you're up to these days and why you are doing this great project. Cool. Brilliant. Thank you very much. Hello. Okay. So yes, we've got about 10 minutes just to kind of wrap up. Are there any other questions? So it could be about anything that you've heard today, or it could be just something completely random, meaning um, it could be any question you have about permaculture or about oh, yeah, nature well, awareness. Can't or here. can't sit anywhere in here now. Uh, what's this? Oh, I'm sick of it. Oh, someone's sick of it. Maybe that's Jolene. Hold on, it's uh, muting. There we go again. These ever jumping uh, people's names. You try and click on mute and they've just moved as just as you press it and you've muted someone else. I've done that to you a few times, Sophie, in case you're wondering why you get muted in the middle of one of your lectures. <laughs> I uh, thought you just got bored, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so any questions, any perme permaculture questions or any questions about Anything that we've covered today? Okay, if there's nothing, should we do a, a checkout? So we have about 10 minutes. So, um, so yes, you've got maybe one minute each at the most. Um, anything that you have found interesting or enjoyed about today? And uh, or anything that you've, yeah, anything that was really useful for you? So we'll start with Budwin and then we'll go to Amelia and Nestor. Yeah, I found it really interesting. Um, this is the first time that I attended a course like this. So I, I kind of have to ingest everything like, um, I kind of get out of it what I want. Um, really, I don't know how to say that. Okay. Yeah, you need to reflect on it. Okay. Yeah, exactly. That's the thing. Yeah. So. Okay. Thanks. So, yeah, great. I mean, the idea of this is kind of as a kind of refresher. So just to see what was what yeah. useful. And uh, so, Amelia yeah. Nestor and then Paul. Um, for me, it was really nice, especially that first part, because I have some ethical dilemma about some, uh, like, um, uh, issues about this movement because I met some people who like uh, doing that permaculture things and uh, what you say on the beginning that was like big difference producing food and uh, changing like the view of life so it was really like um, inspirational for me and clear, clar clarify some things and also some practical things was really nice, especially that oven. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so thank you very much. Okay. I probably know who you mean. You're talking about a Bosnian teacher, <laughs> permaculture teacher. I, I probably know. Literally, permaculture. <laughs> yeah, you know, you know, obviously. It begins with D. Yeah. 
that's, that's awesome. <laughs> for me it was really really inspiring also i mean it's great to meet you all guys and it's also the first time i'm joining you and uh, it's, it was really, really inspiring. I, I find all the presentations quite, quite like interesting and from practical to inspiring. And I don't know, this is a really boost of energy. Thank you very much to all of you. Awesome. Thank you for the feedback. So Paul and then Colin. Yeah, yeah I also continue the, the thanks. Thanks for all the presentations. I really enjoyed it. Um, uh, yeah, from the, um, the rocket stoves, I got inspired to uh, to maybe play out, play around with uh, making some rocket stoves, and uh, definitely I will be taking more into to the crowdfunding and probably be poking you around, Naveen. <laughs> um, yeah, I just enjoyed being here, seeing you all, listening to all. So thank you. Right. You can have a look on. I don't know. I've got it somewhere on online. I've got about. 15, 20 different types of biochar cook stoves, rocket stoves, all kinds of things, tin can stoves, all kinds of stuff. There's so is, many different ways to make it. It's really amazing. Is that Actually, I was website, hoping you were going to tell us about your uh, the one that you showed me in your place because that looked a really fascinating tour. Uh, next time, you, you've got to show us that one. That's the one. So, um, okay, so Callan and then Tor. Okay, so yeah, Colin's written in the text. Thanks a lot for the useful and interesting presentation today and inspiring introduction from Rakesh on permaculture. So I presume that's his feedback. So Tor and then Zoe. Yeah, uh, I, I, I'll join the, the choir. It's, it's, it's nice. I, I really like uh, also this focus, I mean, this holistic uh, kind of focus on permaculture and really reminding reminding us that it is such it, and there are so many different things that that's part of it so that that's really nice and uh yeah i look forward to 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 sharing more about also this little uh, rocket mass heater here uh, uh, next to me uh, maybe next time um and i, I might have to go before uh, before we end because i have another uh zoom starting very soon but thanks a lot everyone okay brilliant thanks Tor. so zoe and then she by the way these sessions happen on the 2nd and 22nd of every month. So just tune in on the 22nd next time. Zoe and then Sheep. Yeah, I really uh, enjoyed today, like also seeing new faces as well and um, sharing all, all these uh, great things that we, that we all know. And um, yeah, also enjoyed giving my presentation although i find it very chaotic but um yeah i'm also um yeah looking forward for next time and see what's what what uh, fruits we can uh, harvest then <laughs> beautiful thank you okay sheep then naveen oh and sheep disappears so naveen and then julie and then we go back to sheep yeah, I'm, I'm just impressed by how much collective knowledge that we have and, uh, you know, uh, for Rakesh and Zoe for getting everyone from around the world to share their experiences and everything that they know. It's just very, very inspiring. Uh, I really liked uh, um, the different personalities that Zoe illustrated. So I start to illustrate my personalities as well. It's uh, very nice to remember that we have many sides. Um, yeah, I enjoyed uh, all the presentations. I'm looking to get the mini rocket stuff to take on my trips. Uh, I would like to have that. I don't want to have a gas stuff uh, anymore. So I'll look into it and I really enjoy the, you know, the, the concept of just looking outside uh, your window itself to, to peek into nature and also start connecting it step by step. Thank you. Right. And if you only have two tin cans, there's an even easier one to make, which is a wood gasifier. Look that up. Wood gasifier. Also ridiculously simple to make. Wonderful. So Julie, and then we go back to sheep. Um, it's just great to be here. And I've got something special from all of the presentations. And just being a part was really fun, you know, to share my presentation too. So thank you everybody. That's good. Wonderful. 
So sheep and then Sophie. Are you muted? Okay, well, she plays around with his microphone settings. We just hear. Does it work now? Ah, yes. Awesome. Okay. Uh, so that's why I uh, lost my uh, my bird. Let's have a look. Um, yeah, I, there was like a lot of uh, different things to like today. Um, some uh, repeated uh, things that were very useful. So this time, um, the first time I saw, for example, uh, Julie's presentation was like overwhelmed by all the directions. And I was kind of following where it went. So I was like, ah, okay, now I see, now I see. So that was really nice. Um, with Naveen, I tried to look up some uh, Dutch uh, crowdfunding things to get it more like concrete. So I also enjoyed that one. Uh, yeah, wood, wood stoves or what, what is it again? Uh, Cook stoves. Yep. Rocket stoves. Uh, rocket stoves, yes, yes. Always nice and very good to have some uh, pictures with it. And that, that starts from underneath was new for me. Like the, the, the stove itself and the combustion area or the, the oven above. So really nice and yeah, I can continue for too many minutes. So I, I guess I really liked it. So thank you. Brilliant, thanks Sheik. And over to Sophie. Yeah, big thanks. Big gratitude to everyone for sharing from the heart. It's really beautiful seeing this spiral and like how we're going deeper. Um, I'm left with the image of the fox striking out on its path, its desire line, and how, yeah, when we can be brave and vulnerable and playful and experiment, we can also find a path that may look strange and random to other people, but has a real purpose for us. So yeah, that was very beautiful. Thank you. Wonderful. Well, thanks as always for everyone who showed up, whether you're making a presentation or whether you're just here to listen and learn and hopefully put some things into action. And um, yeah, look forward to seeing some of you next time. At the end of the day, the, the reason for us doing this is to keep inspiring each other, keep helping each other to yeah, to make connections so that we can really make this world a, a really the beautiful place that we all know that it potentially can be. So, um, yes, keep doing your things, connect, use the Facebook group to keep talking to each other, to yeah, share inspiring things that you come across your journey. And um, yeah, we look forward to seeing you maybe next time and spread the message. and if you can bring some more friends along. Okay, take care everyone. Thanks. Yo yo. Lots of love. Thank you everyone. Thanks, everybody. Good Goodbye. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye. Lots of love. Bye. 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 Bye.